Um, I, I think um, we would just do some analysis. We'll do some announcements. There we go. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah, we'll do some announcements and then we'll do some sharing of our celebrations. So any announcements today? Uh, April has muted everybody. So you'll have to unmute yourself if you'd like to share an announcement. I guess the only announcement I would make is that I'm, I'm not gonna say much about the history of Bright Sunday. So if you're interested in knowing more about Holy Humor Sunday or Bright Sunday as it's called, uh, you can go to the internet and you'll find lots of information there. It is a Sunday in Easter that's celebrated by lots of churches all around the world. So uh, it does have a history and uh, the history is quite interesting. So I encourage you to do that. All right. Um, so sharing of our celebrations, any birthdays, anniversaries? Yes, Lou. It's Michelle, um, my stepdaughter's birthday today. Wonderful. Awesome. Happy birthday, Michelle. Yeah. Awesome. Any other birthday celebrations? It was my middle child's birthday on the 13th. That was an Easter Monday, the year he was born. And we had short sleeves, green grass growing, and a barbecue <laughs> happening. <laughs> ah, on the there, 13th. We there we go. Happy birthday. That's for Lewis. For Lewis. Happy birthday, Lewis and Michelle. And I was asked to share some good news with you all today, which I'm really pleased to be able to do. Um, I would like to announce the engagement of Sarah Miller and Ben Donaldson and Oliver. <laughs> and so, yay. I guess we do it this way. This is how you do it on online. There we go. There we go. And so that's an awesome announcement. Uh, Sarah gave me permission. They were engaged. I have to tell you, Sarah, it was after Sarah was online doing the stewardship work with us. She got off the Zoom and Ben and Oliver uh, proposed. So, <laughs> so it was quite, uh, quite wonderful. So Sarah and Ben uh, engagement. All right, any other announcements or special days? So we send out greetings to all of those who've had special days, anniversaries, birthdays, and other good news. So a warning as we continue throughout the service today, we'll be taking time for belly laugh approved holy humor interludes, beginning with this one. I, and you can tell I love, I love golf jokes. So it was a sunny Sunday morning on the golf course and Joe was beginning his pre-shot routine, visualizing his upcoming shot when a voice came over the clubhouse loudspeaker. Would the gentleman on the woman's tee please back up to the men's tee? Joe was still deep in his routine, seemingly impervious to the interruption, when again, the announcement rang out louder. Would the man on the woman's tee kindly back up to the men's tee? Joe once more ignored the request and kept concentrating, when this time the man in the clubhouse almost yelled, would the man on the woman's tee back up to the men's tee, please? Finally, Joe stopped turned back towards the clubhouse window, looked directly at the person with the microphone and shouted back, would the person in the clubhouse kindly stop shouting and let me play my second shot, please? Ah, and that's what you get for golfing on a Sunday morning. <laughs> All right, so let's take a moment to just center ourselves for worship today. For thousands of years, indigenous peoples have walked on this land in their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives. As we open our worship service today, we acknowledge that we are gathered in the homeland of the Métis and the traditional territory of the Cree, Saltu, and Assiniboia First Nation in the area most recently defined as Treaty 6, and we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages.
Yeah, I'm going to take a video. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God. We believe in God. Who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh. To reconcile and make new. Oh, whoopsies. To work with us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We trust in God. We trust in God. We trust in God. To celebrate God's presence. To live with respect in creation. To love and serve others. To seek justice. To seek justice. And, and resist evil. And receive and resist evil. To proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen. Our judge and our hope. In life. In death life beyond death. God is with us. We're not alone. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 <laughs> I love that creed. <laughs> and the and the great part of it, it just is that. Um, I don't know if you know this, the guy who's driving and the little boy in the back, right? We used to do that with our kids too. It was a way of putting them to sleep sometimes, but you notice that right at the end, the little boy still wasn't to sleep, right? <laughs> or the child wasn't asleep. So um, yeah, sometimes you just have to laugh, right? I see that Sarah has joined us. And so Sarah, we have had a celebration for your and Ben's engagement. And so we send congratulations to you and Ben and to Oliver. Thanks. <laughs> all right. We're sorry you missed the celebration because you saw all of us doing this with our hands. <laughs> That's okay. I was expecting Facebook and then I'm like, right, it's Zoom. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I, know. I know it's a little confusing, right? So, <laughs> okay. So we light our Christ candle today. We light this candle that represents both the mystery of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection, and the affirming power of God's love for all. We are comforted by the light that shines within each of us, this light given to us through the Holy Spirit to pass on to others. Today, let us open our hearts and our minds to both the receiving and the giving. And so joy is loose in the dawning of a new day, in the greetings and smiles of those who gather, in the courage it takes to be light in the darkness. Let us pray. God of life, we gather as witnesses of your abundant love and joy. We are amazed to discover you again through our prayers, our praise, and our laughter. Encourage us to be generous stewards of your grace and open our minds and hearts to the endless possibilities for new life and new growth. May our joy be infectious, our love be abundant, 
and may our laughter be deep, for we are your Easter people. Amen. And now we're going to turn to our opening hymn, Know That God Is Good From More Voices. God is good, know that God is good, know that God is good, God is good, God is good, know that God is good, know that God is good, know that God is good, God is good. God is good. And we know that God is good. Thanks to Lou and Ruth for that beautiful a cappella rendition of the song, Know That God Is Good. Let us join together with our bright Sunday statement of faith. We believe in God who made us in God's image. We live, we love, we laugh because we are like God. We believe in Jesus Christ, the son of God. Jesus had the last laugh when he rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal, our counselor, our guide, our motivator, and our joy. Forgive us, Holy One, when we take ourselves too seriously, when we don't claim the happiness that is rightfully ours, when we forget that you will have the last laugh in this world. Restore to us joy and restore us to the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so today, there we go, Cindy's all ready. <laughs> um, I've invited Cindy Goodman from Winyard Pastoral Charge from the Winyard Congregation of the United Church to join us because I have heard Cindy do cowboy poetry before. And I thought it is so special that everybody needs to hear some cowboy poetry. And so welcome to Cindy, who's going to give us the first of our cowboy poetry today, Outhouse Blues. Outhouse Blues, as written by Anne Slade. Did I get lost? When our boys were little, they thought they could piddle anywhere on the ranch at all. By the creek, by the gate, they just couldn't wait. Even piddled in old Bessie's stall. Well, Grandma acted astonished and she gently admonished, Still she thought our boys were so sweet. Till she took them to town and when she turned around, caught them fiddling right out on Main Street. There we go. <laughs> That's the applause. Awesome, Cindy, thank you. And we have another excerpt of cowboy poetry towards the end of our service today. So it's time to open it up to others. What are your jokes and your stories that you'd like to share today? And you'll have to unmute yourself in order to share. So please do, Lou, go ahead and unmute yourself. I was clapping. Oh, were you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can do that on the reactions. Good point. <laughs> but, I, but I have a golfing joke about God. Okay. Okay. <laughs> a priest and a nun were on the golf course, and the nun was having a bad putting day. And so, about the fifth hole, she was really disgusted with her putting, and she, well, she started swearing, and she said, "Damn it, I missed." 
and the priest was getting kind of irate with her and he said sister you really must not swear like that the lord will not be happy with you and so on the sixth hole she was from six feet away and she lipped the cup and the ball went around and out and she said damn it i missed and the priest said sister such language the lord will not be pleased and so on the seventh hole she did it again from like a foot away from the cup it went right around the cup and went <laughs> out the other side and she said damn it i missed and priest said I don't know what the Lord is going to do. And so this great big major black cloud came over the golf course and right over the hole where they were standing. And this huge bolt of lightning came down and hit the priest dead. And the nun stood there and she looked around and she heard this voice came from the cloud and it said, damn it, I missed. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. <laughs> All right. Anyone else a story or a little joke to share? Don't be shy. Okay, then you're going to have to hear one of mine. A string walks into a bar and orders a beer. And the bartender says, I'm sorry, but we don't serve strings in here. Well, the string goes back outside, but he's so upset at being excluded that in his exasperation, he ties himself up in knots and that, of course, messes up his well-coiffed hair. Determined, however, that they are not going to get away with this, he gathers up his fortitude, walks right back into the bar where he orders the beer. And the bartender looks at him and squints and says, hey, aren't you that there string that was just in here? And the string standing a little taller now says, nope, I'm afraid not. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Last chance. Anyone else? I mean, we have another interlude later, but any other? I will. Maybe. Brenda. Okay. There we go, Allison. Okay. So you guys might've heard this one before, cause I think I've told it before, but, but some of you know that we have to do some upgrades to the, to the church to, to meet fire codes in this coming year. And so, so, you know, there's going to be fundraising of some kind. And, and so I have, I have some good news and some bad news. And so the good news is we have the money for the fire upgrades. The bad news. It's still in your pockets. <laughs> awesome <laughs> exactly exactly um we're going to use two scripture readings today and the first one is from genesis chapter 18 9 to 15 uh it's sarah laughed now in this story abraham encounters three strangers near the oaks of Mamre, and he extends hospitality to them and makes a meal for them, has Sarah make a meal for them. And while they're eating, this is what happened. And they said to Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? And Abraham said, they're in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? And say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season. And Sarah will have a son. 
But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, oh, yes, you did laugh. And our second reading is from Ecclesiastes, reading from chapter 3. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. May God's blessing be added to the sharing of these words. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts bring joy and laughter in your holy name, O God our source of life. Amen. A little boy was waiting for his mother to come out of the grocery store. And as he waited, he was approached by a man who said, son, can you tell me where the post office is? And the little boy replied, oh, sure. You just go straight down the street a couple of blocks and then you turn to your right. The man thanked the little boy kindly and said, I'm the new pastor in town. And I'd like for you to come to church on Sunday and I'll show you the way to heaven. I'll show you how to get to heaven. The little boy chuckled and said, oh, come on. You don't even know the way to the post office. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I like to laugh. In fact, I agree with Charlie Chaplin, who once said, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Further to this, I believe that God encourages us to laugh, wants us to laugh, because I believe that it's one of the places where God can meet us, is when we let down our guard, step out from behind our fragile human egos, and just laugh. A Sunday school teacher asked her children as they were on their way to the church service, and why is it necessary to be quiet in church? One bright little girl replied, because people are sleeping? It has been my experience that church meetings run more smoothly if there is laughter. Funerals are more real when our laughter is mixed with our tears. And Sunday worship is greatly improved when we are embraced by shared moments of well-intentioned laughter. Six-year-old Angie and her four-year-old brother Joel were sitting together in church and Joel was giggling and singing and talking out loud. Finally, his big sister had had enough. You're not supposed to talk out loud in church. Who, who's going to stop me, Joel asked. And Angie pointed to the back of the church and said, you see those two people standing by the door? They're the hushers. Now, you may have heard of laughter therapy or the phrase laughter is the best medicine. And the interesting thing is that it, it ain't no hoax. It actually is true. Science has shown that when we laugh, we release the body's natural healing enzymes called endorphins. Singers get that kind of release when they sing. Runners and bikers get that from physical activity. But here's the good news. You can also get a burst of endorphins from hugs, which we're falling a little short on these days, chocolate, which there's an abundance of, and listening to music, which is always good. And best of all, endorphins are released when you enjoy a great big belly laugh. Here in the church, we can laugh because we know that God is good. And we can laugh because of the wonder of all that God has done for us. <clears throat> An atheist went on a holiday to Loch Ness in Scotland. 
And while he was out in the boat fishing, the Loch Ness monster reared up and hissed at him. The atheist cried out, oh my Lord, help. And a voice from heaven came down and said, I thought you did not believe in me. The atheist replied, well, a minute ago, I didn't believe in the Loch Ness monster either. Even when we read scripture, we find many funny stories, many humorous events, many characters that call us to approach them with a sense of humor in order to understand them. And so in the Hebrew scriptures, we have stories like the one we heard today about Abraham and Sarah. Jesus often used humorous stories to point people to their foibles. One of my favorite images is the image of Jesus, an artist rendering by Megan Wheatley, which shows him in the midst of a big belly laugh. And so one could say that biblical humor is the humor of those who know how to live and how to love. It is not nasty or cruel, but it instead focuses on the absurdity of some of our human traits. Things like our pride and our silly habits and our strange ways of thinking and speaking. And when we can laugh at these strange traits of ours, they are transformed and so are we. The children were all lined up for their first confession when little Johnny's turn came and the priest asked him to confess his sins and the boy promptly replied, Father, I threw a stone at Jimmy. Well, that was a very misguided thing to do, my son, said the priest. No, it wasn't misguided at all, said Johnny. I actually hit him. Even the word humor comes from the same Latin root as humility, with the root being down to earth. You see, humor allows us to be honest about ourselves. It can relieve tension and division even in impossible situations. And it can connect us to each other when we find there's no other point of connection. It can also be an untapped source of strength and resilience in times of trouble. Perhaps like this little prayer, which is among my favorites. Dear God, so far today I've done all right. I haven't gossiped and I haven't lost my temper. And I haven't been grumpy, nasty, or selfish, and I'm, I'm really glad of that. But in a few minutes, God, I'm going to get out of bed. And from then on, I'm probably going to need a lot of help. Amen. Or this one that's offered by a little girl. A mother invited some people to dinner, and at the table, the father turned to their six-year-old daughter and said, Would you like to say the blessing? But I don't know what to say, the girl replied. Oh, just say what you hear mummy say, the father answered. And so the little girl bowed her head and said, Lord, why on earth did I invite all these people to dinner? Or perhaps this one overheard as a little boy prayed. Lord, if you can't make me a better boy, don't worry about it. I'm having a really good time like I am. Of course, there are always those days when we're just not in the mood for laughing. And let's face it, when we look around these days, we may even feel quite depressed because of the state of our world and the ongoing suffering of this pandemic. But sorrow and joy are woven fine and sharing in a moment of good humor is not asking us to put on a happy face and pretend that troubles and sorrows don't exist in the world. They do, they always do. Instead, it's asking us to remember that just as God made a way out of the darkness on Good Friday to new life at Easter, God will make a way for us in situations where it feels like there is no way out. There was a preacher who fell in the ocean and couldn't swim. Clinging to a piece of wood, a boat came by and the captain yelled, do you need help, sir? And the preacher calmly said, oh, no, 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 it's okay, God will save me. A little later, another boat came by and the fisherman asked, 
hey, do you need help, friend? And the preacher said, no, 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 I'm fine. God will save me. After that, a helicopter appeared and tried to throw the man a lifeline, but the preacher waved it away and signaled to the pilot that he was just fine. Well, eventually the preacher drowned and went to heaven. And when he arrived, he asked God, God, why didn't you save me? And God replied, good grief, I tried. I sent two boats and a helicopter and you turned them all down. And so even though we may be troubled at times, can we remember that moment when we were surprised by joy or when someone came to help us, when our load was lightened because of someone's kindness and care? A little boy walked down the beach and as he did, he spied a woman who was sitting under a beach umbrella. He walked to her, uh, up to her and he said, are you a Christian? And she said, yes. Do you read your Bible every day? And she nodded her head, yes. Do you pray often? The boy asked. And again, she said, yes. And with that, he asked his final question. Will you hold my quarter while I go swimming? At times, our being able to laugh, even in the most difficult of situations, can feel like a sigh of relief. It can remind us that we are still ourselves, even when the whole world seems to be crashing down around us. A father was at the beach with his children when his four-year-old son ran up to him and grabbed his hand and led him to the shoreline where there was a seagull that lay dead in the sand. Daddy, what happened to him? The son asked. He died and went to heaven, said the father. The boy thought for a moment and then said, so why did God throw him back down? And so there it is. The reason why we celebrate Bright Sunday, Holy Humor Sunday. Even John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Church, knew the importance of humor when he said that a sour and dour religion is the devil's religion. Oh, which reminds me of the two cannibals who were sitting together feasting on a clown and one cannibal turned to the other looking mildly perplexed and said, does this taste funny to you? <laughs> Humor is a gift because it is one of the ways God brings healing to our souls. And so we need to laugh. We need to laugh at ourselves, to laugh at the world as it is, and to laugh with God. Because let's face it, we do some pretty bizarre and crazy things at times. A group of children were lined up in the cafeteria at their elementary school for lunch. At the head of the table was a large tray of apples with a note attached saying, take only one because God is watching. At the other end of the table was a large tray of chocolate chip cookies, also with a note attached to it. Take all you want. God is watching the apples. Reinald Niebuhr said, that the very essence of sin is taking ourselves too seriously. And if that's true, then the very essence of grace is to receive the gift of laughter, especially when the joke is on us, pointing to the gap between who we are and who God would have us be. The newspaper reported that on Holy Humor Sunday, Reverend MacDonald gave one of the world's shortest sermons Upon announcing that the focus of the sermon that day would be on sin, McDonald stood up, said, don't do it, and then sat down again. Now, our sermon today was a little longer than that, but perhaps unlike sin, holy humor takes a little time to sink in. But as it does sink in, let us conclude by thanking God for the gifts of humor and joy, because these are things that remind us of the abundance of life. And let us always remember that we are an Easter people 
enlivened in the spirit and in knowing that God had the last laugh when love and goodness were restored into the world through the risen Christ. And so given that, I believe it is our Christian calling to laugh with God and with each other for the healing of our collective souls and for hope in our hurting world. Okay, I can't resist. So one more story before I say amen. The preacher was completing a temperance sermon and with great expression, he said, if I had all the beer in the world, I'd take it and I'd throw it into the river. And the congregation nodded their approval. With even greater emphasis, he added, and if I had all the wine in the world, I'd take it and I'd throw it into the river too. And the people clapped and saying amen. And then finally he concluded, and if I had all the whiskey in the world, I'd take it and I'd throw it into the river. And as he sat down, the song leader stood up quite cautiously and announced, for our closing song today, let us sing hymn 710 in Voices United, Shall We Gather at the River. Sadly, because of COVID, there's no party at the end of this sermon. And our closing song is actually not Shall We Gather at the River. Instead, we're going to stay safe as we sing under our masks with a smile in our eyes as we sing 624 and Voices United, Give to Us Laughter. Amen. We don't need masks. Oh, we don't. No, you're right. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully. <laughs> Give to us laughter, O oh source of our life. Laughter can banish so much of our strife. Laughter and love give us wholeness and health. Laughter and love are the coin of true wealth. Give to us laughter a sign of deep joy. Let us in laughing find Christian employ. Joining with stars and with bright northern lights, laughing and praising and sharing delights. Why do we worry that we will lose face? Why act like king for the whole human race? Often in family and often with friend, laughing at pride causes anguish to end. Even in sorrow and hours of grief, laughter with tears brings most healing relief. God give us laughter and God give us peace. Joys of your presence among us increase. As we come now to the prayers of the people, let us begin by giving thanks for children who give us these delightful moments. Children like three-year-old Reese who says, our father who does art in heaven, Harold is your name. Or this little four-year-old who prayed, and forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who put trash in our baskets. And finally, this one. I'd been teaching my three-year-old daughter the Lord's Prayer. Finally, she decided to go solo. So I listened with pride as she carefully enunciated every word. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from email. Friends, the prayers of our community were emailed last week. And so let us offer them together now. As our world continues to struggle with COVID-19, we pray for those who are affected by the virus and those who have lost loved ones to this pandemic. Today we pray for our friends and our neighbors 
I would invite your continuing prayers for Jeannie Craddock. I had the delight to talk to Jeannie this week and she's at home and doing well and appreciates all of our prayers. I would also invite your prayers for Dick and Jeannie's grandson, Luca, who is recuperating from surgery. We pray today through the World Council of Churches for the people of the countries of Belarus, Moldova, Russia, Ukraine. We also pray through the United Churches of Saskatchewan for the people of the Turtle River Parish Shared Ministry in Edom, Glaslin, Livelong, Miota, Mervyn, and Turtleford. We also pray for all who are marking Earth Day on April 22nd. Are there other prayers we would like to share? Then let us lift to God in prayer our joys and our struggles, our cares and our concerns as we pray. God, we give thanks for your steadfast love, abiding presence, and for your creative counsel and guidance along the way. You enrich our lives with a world filled with colors and scents with tastes that delight our senses and laughter that delights our souls. We see the goodness that surrounds us and we give you thanks and praise. We are witnesses to the world in which we live and see the injustices and the colossal failures. Sometimes we close our eyes and wish we could just unsee some of the things that we've witnessed. Witnessing has its own form of pain, but the suffering that we see is sometimes incomprehensible. And so today we pray for those who are in daily pain, whose bodies and spirits require great effort. We pray for those who are hungry for food, encouragement, and relationship. We pray for those whose spirits are diminished. Restore each of these into your attentive care. God, what some lack, others have in abundance. And so guide us to know what is ours to keep and what is ours to share. Help us to loosen our grip on belongings and possessions and to awaken our hearts so that we may live with hearts attuned to the rhythms and needs of our community and our world. We live from this moment. We love from this moment. May we live this day as a gift, and may we move into the days ahead with gratitude and generosity. This we pray, as we say together, our God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, back to an open open space. So if anybody has thought of a little story or a joke they'd like to share, now would be a good time to do that. Anyone? I have a joke. Okay, all right. Yay, Linda. 
once there was a guy named Bill, and he wanted to buy a horse. And so he found an ad and it said it was a Christian horse. So he went to, to the ranch to check it out. And the guy told Bill that he was easy to ride. All you have to do is say, praise the Lord to get him to go. And he would go. And if you want him to stop, you need to say, amen. So he decided to take him out for a ride. And he said, praise the Lord. And the, do the horse started to go. And he said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And the horse started to go faster. And he realized there was a cliff coming. So he's like, amen. And the horse stopped just before the edge of the cliff. And after he stopped, the guy hollered, praise the Lord. <laughs> Over the cliff he went. <laughs> Over the cliff he goes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, thanks, Linda. Any others? <laughs> Any other little jokes or stories to share? A little girl was visiting her friend who had two dogs, new dogs, and so she asked what the dogs' names were. The friend responded by saying that one was Rolex and the other was Timex, and her friend said, who ever heard of naming their dog something like that? Hello, said the friend. Well, they are watchdogs, you know. All right, any other? Then we're going to hear the second of our cowboy poetry. This is a little piece called The Barb Wire Vault. Take it away, Cindy. This was also written by Anne Slade. When we'd been wed just a short time, he said, now, honey, here's a good job for you. While I'm away, check those heifers each day. There's one of them that's overdue. Well, I beamed with pride, though nervous inside. This city gal could finally show that she could fit in. So keen to begin, I waved as I watched him go. That very next day, I went out right away, checking heifers who weren't even brought. Why, they didn't mind when I viewed their behinds, and I figured I was the boss. But I was wrong, and I'm confessing. I learned my lesson, and honestly, this is no yarn. One heifer was complaining. She seemed to be straining, so I urged her toward the barn. But she didn't want to go, and how would I know her water broke when she stood up? She sniffed the air like she smelled calf somewhere. And here's where I ran out of luck. I, she, turned, she turned around kind of on the ground and I didn't think it my place to stay where I was. So I took off because I didn't like the look on her face. I raced for the fence, but that didn't make sense because heifers run faster than me. I should have jumped higher, but I hit that top wire and caught my jeans just above the knee. Now I'm hanging down with my head on the ground and her snotty nose in my face. Cow poop in my hair and my boots in the air. Oh God, what an awful disgrace. She huffed and she snorted and kind of cavorted like she was playing with me. She'd back up and stare, but she was right there if I'd reach for that barb in my knee. And her tail was a mess and I could have cared less, except she'd used it to ward off the flies and pieces of mud mixed in with wet crud speckled my nose and my eyes. So I hung by that wire until she got tired and moved off to, towards the trees. Then I disconnected before she objected, thankful to finally be freed. When I got in that night, I thought over my plight and I knew that I was at fault my green Miss Reedens what sent her stampeding and taught me the barbed wire vault. Ah, awesome. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. So if you ever need a cowboy poet, let Cindy know. She has more. Awesome. Thanks, Cindy, for those two wonderful sharings. So any other stories to share before we move on to our minute for mission today? Then I'm going to turn it over to Clark and he's going to share with us our minute for mission 
on behalf of Westminster Affirm. Good morning. Well, as the service today is being on, shared on Zoom, I'll introduce myself. My name is Clark Curtis. And yes, I am the life partner of Brendan, the presiding minister today. I want to provide clarity that what I say today are my thoughts and beliefs as to Westminster United becoming a recognized affirming community. If you wish to talk to your minister or anyone representing the Westminster United Committee, please do. As the member of the committee, we want and need to hear from you. So I'm here to say a few words about Westminster starting, stating and being recognized as an affirming community. The United Church of Canada, which has been my church all my life, has worked progressively to be a caring, open and inclusive church. We have made errors and we've done good. The residential schools on the air side and the acceptance of gay and lesbian ministry personnel on the good. For me, the word affirming covers a wide scope, inclusivity and acceptance of people of other ethnicities than other, ourselves. But you see, also for me, the circle is wider. Yes, I am speaking specifically with respect to people whom have chosen to be recognized as LGBTQ2. Now I say this because it seems to me that that is where people focus when you say to become affirming. So I'll share a few of my own thoughts. I know I can say without a doubt that no one listening today or anywhere in this world ever has to be born into it. I also state that I've never studied anatomy or the brain. However, my common sense says that whether we are identified physically as the tag goes, as male or female, or whether you're drawn to one of the said tags or the other, I believe this is one's freedom of choice. I believe that all persons have the right to be as they may choose, no matter what the physical may say. I was raised to believe in the freedom of speech and freedom of choice. No one who has identif identified themselves as being part of the LGBTQ community, or for that matter, those of us that do not, we all want the same thing. This is me, accept me for who I am. It is time to step up and accept that what we see in the mirror and what we see in others is not always what is held and believed in one's heart or soul. I would further like to point out that members of the affirming committee are really open to hearing from you, your thoughts. We have and will continue to provide educational opportunities for those that wish to participate and learn more. As you're all aware, nothing changes without a congregational vote. I trust down the road you will feel comfortable to put your vote forward as you may choose. My last words are that for me, this is good. This is right and this is accepting and being inclusive. So without anything else, I've been asked to, to close with a prayer. So I'll offer a very simple but complex thought, author unknown. It's called the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clark, for those thoughts and for that sharing on behalf of Westminster Affirm Team. And so let us take a moment of personal reflection as we visualize the offering of our gifts and our talents and our lives to God. We usually do that through our offering plate, but since COVID has struck, we have had to do that in other ways. And so I invite you to look into your announcements for the ways that you can make your gifts to God's mission and ministry in the world. And we thank you for your ongoing and generous support of Westminster United Church.
Let us pray our prayer of dedication. We are here ready to offer a portion of our abundance, our time, our energy, and our resources to God. Let us begin with gratitude, giving thanks to God who is steadfast in love and faithful. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for all that we have and all that we are. May the tithes, gifts, and offerings we make be of healing service to our hurting world. And may our collective offering and witness be an expression of love and joy through the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Father O'Malley answers the phone. Hello, is this Father O'Malley, the voice says? It is. This is the CRA. Can you help us? I can. Do you know a Ted Houlihan? I do. Is he a member of your congregation? He is. Did he donate $10,000 to the church last year? He will. All right. So a couple more stories just before our closing hymn. A fellow was walking along the beach and found a bottle and picked it up. And of course, a magical genie popped out and said, thank you for letting me out. And for your kindness, I will grant you one wish. And the fellow said, well, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I can't because I'm afraid to fly and ships make me deathly sick. So my wish is for you to build a highway from here in Saskatchewan to Hawaii. And the genie replied, Ooh, I'm sorry, I don't think I can do that. Just think of all the work involved. Think of the huge pilings we would need to hold up that highway and how deep they would have to be to reach the bottom of the ocean. And, and think of all the cement that would be needed. Plus, it's such a long span. There would have to be gas stations and rest stops along the way. Uh, I think it's just too much to ask. So it's impossible. Just think of another wish. So the fellow thought for a moment and said, well, there is one thing I've always wanted to know. I'd like to be able to understand women, what makes them laugh and what makes them cry, why they can be so difficult to get along with, you know, like what makes them tick? Well, the genie thought about this for a split second and then replied, so do you want that highway with two lanes or four? And while all the men are guffawing at that one, try this. A little girl asked her mother, where did people come from? And the mother answered, well, God made Adam and Eve, and they had children, and that's how all humankind was made. A couple of days later, the little girl asked her father the same question, and the father answered, well, many years ago, there were monkeys, and that's where the human race evolved from. Confused, the little girl returned to her mother and said, Mommy, how is it possible that you told me we were created by God and Daddy said we come from monkeys? Without missing a beat, the mother answered, Well, dear, it's very simple. I told you about my side of the family and your father told you about his. And so let's join together in our closing hymn, Sing a Happy Hallelujah. Voices United 224. With a twinkle in God's eye, 
made to shine, reflect the glory, given light and space to fly. Alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. Alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. Laughed at God's good timing, Mary sang and David danced. Jesus smiled and hugged the children, so his life for us enhanced. Alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. Alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. Every day sing alleluia, we are loved for so absurd. Human foolish chosen people, God still takes us at our word. Alleluia, all creation. Alleluia, everyone. Alleluia, all creation. Alleluia, everyone. Sing a happy alleluia. Sing it out with heart and style. With the echo of God's laughter, with the image of God's smile. Alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. Alleluia, all creation, alleluia, everyone. Awesome. Alleluia. Sing a happy alleluia. Okay, so last time, if there's uh, anyone who has a story or a joke they want to share yet, just open your mic and let us hear it. I've got one from uh, Ralph Milton. A mechanic who worked out of his home had a dog named Mace. Mace had a bad habit of eating all the grass on the mechanic's lawn. So the mechanic had to keep Mace inside. The grass eventually became overgrown. One day, the mechanic was working on a car in the backyard and dropped his wrench, losing it in the tall grass. He couldn't find it for the life of him, so he decided to call it a day. That night, Mace escaped from the house and ate all the grass in the backyard. The next morning, the mechanic went outside and saw his wrench glinting in the sunlight. Realizing what had happened, he looked toward the heavens and proclaimed, A grazing mace, how sweet the hound that saved a wrench for me. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. Anyone else? Yep, I'll I have, have one. All right, Lou. Okay. So, uh, husband and wife were having a discussion about who should make the coffee in the morning. Should it be the husband or the wife? And they had a discussion about this and this lasted two or three days. And finally the wife comes in and she says, I've got it. It says in the Bible that the husband should make the coffee in the morning. <laughs> he says, it does not say that in the Bible. And she says, well, sure it does. He says, well, show me. And she opens her Bible and she turns to the book of He Brews. <laughs> ah, awesome. Thanks, Lou. Any others? Please don't be shy. It's just good fun. Any others? Just unmute yourself and go ahead. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us for our service today. It's been delightful and lots of good belly laughs. And so we, we end with our closing prayer. God, grant me a joyful heart and a holy sense of humor. Give me the gift of faith to be renewed and shared with others each day. 
Teach me to live this moment only, looking neither to the past with regret, nor to the future with apprehension. Let love be my guide. Let my life be a prayer. And let my laughter and joy overflow. Amen. Uh, one other final story I want to share with you. Cindy also shared this with me. It's also from Ralph Milton, our friend who wrote the This United Church of Ours. And he says this, little Bobby was spending the weekend with his grandmother after a particularly trying week in kindergarten. His grandmother decided to take him to the park on a beautiful Saturday morning. It had been snowing all night and everything was lovely. Doesn't it look like an artist painted this scenery, said grandma. Did you know that God painted this just for you? Yes, agreed Bobby. And God did it left-handed too. Why do you say that, Bobby? Well, said little Bobby, we learned at Sunday school last week that Jesus sits on God's right hand. <laughs> okay, so friends, let us go in laughter. Let us go in grace with God's love in our hearts and with a smile upon our face. Amen. So thanks everyone for joining our service today. If you'd like to open your mics and just have a little chat or however, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs>